Okay, now you're recording. So can you tell us a little bit about your this case study that you had? Sure. Um, this case study, he's uh, a male in his 60s, so he's in the, the Vata Ayurvedic age. Mm -hmm. um, when I did his uh, Prakriti, it came out to be um, he's more... He was more Vata dominant when he was younger, and he barely had any Pitta or Kapha. Um, and that, now his current state, his Vakruti, is his Vata has increased and his Kapha has severely increased. Um, and also I found that he has uh, low prana, tejas, and ojas as well. Um, so when I sat down and asked him questions about his health, um, he had a lot of problems. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the most important of the problems were his asthma, breathing difficulties, and um, and he had nose polyps, a lot of a lot of sinus, chronic sinus issues, which have been happening uh, over the years. And uh, he says that they get uh, it gets a lot worse in the cold winter, and also in the the humidity in the summertime. And he's he's in Michigan, so the summer or the winters get super cold, um, and the summers get really humid. So it's really a not not a good location or climate for him to be in um, during these uh, imbalances. Um, and let's see, there's other things that are also affecting his health, and a lot of a lot of them started after he retired. And um, he really has been like fully kapha, you know, too. He's he's lazy, he watches a lot of TV, he craves, he eats sweets a lot. Um, he has, he's resistant to change, he sleeps a lot, he takes naps, you know, throughout the day. Um, and so I've gathered from that that, you know, it, it would be best for him to uh, have a, you know, a kapha pacifying diet first. I know he has a lot of problems, but just based on the knowledge that I have so far, is that he he should definitely just start to um, change his his diet and lifestyle immediately. You know, but he's he's very resistant and very hesitant, and that's one thing that I definitely need help with to help him understand that his health is important. You know, and he needs to take these actions in order to feel better. He doesn't like I bought him a neti pie. He doesn't doesn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, he doesn't you know want to do anything. So, but you know, I guess from now, from what I know so far, is just to try to encourage him to do uh, a kapha pacifying diet and lifestyle and herbs, just to reduce his kapha, which will help his you know, sinus issues and also, you know, um, and I also would suggest doing, like finding like a hobby or part-time job or something to keep him active so he's not as emotional because he's very emotionally sensitive as well. So, so that's what yeah. I have so far. So well, that's pretty good. You know, one, one thing that I find, um, patients who are not easily motivated, I don't even take them on. I don't want to deal with people who are not motivated about their health because it's very, very difficult. Yeah. But being yeah. a kafa myself, um, what is his diet? Is what is he eat, what is he eating? He loves soups, and he probably eats soups like every single day. He loves bread. He's he's not a vegetarian. He does eat some some meat, but but he he tends to eat things that are maybe older, like a couple of days old, which you know I try to tell him to just try to cook and eat fresh as much as possible. Um, you know, he's, uh, I'm trying to think. Is he allergic to anything? He's allergic to some medication, like penicillin. I think the food allergies would be, he says that he gets diarrhea when he eats dairy, and he needs like milk or dairy, and beans give him an upset stomach. So I don't think there's any. What about wheat? Did you tell him to uh, reduce the wheat? Um, I haven't, but he, you know what, since he does like eating a lot of bread, maybe, you know, that's something I didn't even think about. I should definitely recommend him. Um, but Just to reduce the wheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the great news is that he loves soups. 
So that's an excellent you know, so because he's not going to change easily. One thing you can add in is you can add um, tea, teas and teas that help both vata and kapha. He and loves tea too. That's, that's yeah. another good thing for him. So that's, that's a great thing. So severely imbalanced is because he he drinks tea every single day and like so really tulsi tea. tea tea that is that has an affinity for the lungs tea that has an affinity for cleaning out the sinuses ginger tea uh tulsi tea i mean he obviously has what is his, he has mandagani and low appetite so yeah. tea that increases his agony and uh also a little bit more more you know this is very good news to me you know the fact that he loves tea and soup so just yeah. Changing his diet from, you know, uh, mostly 80%, even if he becomes 75% vegetarian. And sure. maybe tulsi tea, ginger tea. And of course, you've suggested uh, Anu Taila. Maybe there is a Taila that uh, Deepak Chopra has, Ayurnas, which is pretty good. So I don't know if he has inflammation, but it has lotus okay. oil in it. And okay. a lot of people, they will have a reaction to eucalyptus. Because okay. most of the thylums have eucalyptus in it, so maybe the lotus oil, and actually using a couple of also the Ayurvedic Institute, Dr. Vasanthalad has a really nice nasi oil as well. Okay. So that would be good. So I think this is pretty good, but usually, if somebody is not motivated to change, I just I just don't take them on. It's it's really hard. Yeah, but when they're actually in your family, it's kind of hard to see them like in that state, <laughs> oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, like so. my family thinks I don't know anything, so I don't even deal with them. Yeah. I don't know anything because they're, they're, she's family, so she doesn't know anything, so, um, yeah. Okay, I'll try. I'll I'll just give it a try and see if I can help because it's, you know, I, I, I want this person to change, you know, and get better health, so... Okay, well, thank you very much. It's pretty good. Uh, Dr. Sahana, do you have anything to add? Mm, yeah, as uh, Dr. Monica said, um, uh, he loves to. That's a really a great point for you because you can just add, uh, ask him to add some uh, kapha pacifying herbs, maybe trichota, that's a ginger, pepper, and uh, peppercorn to it. And that really, the, you are really not asking him to change because you are keeping on his regular diet or what he likes, and you're introducing your medicine through it, and it's, it doesn't look like a change to him, but exactly, but you're still working on his problems. So if you find it beneficial using some of these herbs through his diet itself, he might be influenced by the effect of Ayurveda, and uh, he might change his mind to um, uh, through involved with the Ayurvedic therapy is more. That's a really great point you have there, and I think you should really consider that as a plus point. That's all. Uh, except other than that, uh, everything looks uh, like pretty okay. okay to me at this level. Yeah, I have done a good job. Keep it. This is really good job. Yeah. Okay. So who's next? Um, we have. Okay. See, one thing when you're submitting your case studies, it's a good idea to name it because we have so many students. So here and we can. Um, Andrea, are you ready to talk about your case study? Is she here? Um, yes. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you can see um, my study was a woman in her early 40s. Um, she just uh, in her youth a, a pitta dominant, and um, I found that she had a lot of in these past years. She's actually a woman that works in my department and she just switched um, jobs so she moved to from a different department which the past two years was very uh, she was working 10 to 12 hours a day and she, she was having problems with her family because she was hardly home and so um so she switched to our department to try and like you know just have something normal <laughs> um and so as a result um she had a lot of vata so um i contribute also, you know, the high stress um, that she had in her life, um, as well as um, moving into her, her you know, menopausal age, that her vata has increased greatly. So she's had a lot of problems with constipation um, and dryness. And, um, and I, I could tell that her hair was very dry and she didn't have um, that radiance in her skin. Um, and even though she told me, I asked her, so, well, do you have a problem with low, you know, energy or 
And she says, oh, no, I feel, you know, I feel like I have a lot of energy, but she's drinking coffee all day. <laughs> so, so I kind of added the low energy there because that's what's keeping her going right now. And one of the main things she says is she says, I just cannot digest my food. And she said that her mother had a problem with that as well. The woman had a problem with, with digesting food. Um, and um, let's see. And she also mentioned in her diet, um, she's been trying to eat, she's been trying to lose weight because she had gained some weight as well. Um, and sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place here. Um, and she told me that she was eating ch a lot of chips, mostly for dinner, <laughs> which I know really contributes to the indigestion. I was doing that before I actually went to a practitioner, Ayurvedic practitioner, and it just causes the food to sit there. It just adds to the dryness, adds to the constipation. Um, so I really didn't give her, you know, suggest anything except really lowering that, trying to um, add other things like soup in her diet, maybe for, for dinner rather than just eating chips, you know, and, you know, based on my own experience, that will help a lot probably with her, um, with the constipation. And the only thing was is that, um, that I found too was that she would fluctuate between low and high apana. She would, she says during her menses, she has loose stools. So I kind of didn't know, um, I actually have a question about that, how a person can switch from low to high. So she's constipated most of the time, but during her menses, she's not. So I don't know. If, um, that is actually very typical. What does Visham Agni mean? Visham means it's irregular. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's down. So with, mm -hmm. with a, with a kapha person during, what happens during menses is that upon is naturally high because it's trying to get rid of all that, you know, endometrium. And here's what's happening. At first she's constipated and then she has loose stool. So this is very typical Visham Agni. This is actually pretty common. Okay. But I actually consider it a good thing because when her apana is higher, her body is trying to get rid of everything that she's accumulated. She's a very, very typical Vata energy case. It, this is like a textbook case. So, you know, you can actually go on the internet and find protocols for Vata and that'll fit her. Uh, ships are dry, coffee is drying, eating on the go is drying. Not, you know, so she needs to externally maybe get Abhyanga oil massages. Uh, okay. And internally, she needs to also oleate herself, so external and internal oleation. Externally, because this, this is dry food. Even if she mm -hmm. was eating organic chips, mm -hmm. even if they're organic chips and made of organic grains, but the point is the quality of the chips is that they're dry. And so she, you know, if, if she could dip those chips in a nice, you know, coconut chutney or like a sauce and make sure, or maybe make a tortilla soup, you know, and actually put the chips in the soup so they're they're wet and moist. And uh, Monica, do I think for sure she should uh, change her time of eating the chips? That's a night for dinner. Yeah. I don't think that's uh, that's mm -hmm. adding up uh, to the problem because the oily stuff and um, the deep fried items in the night. I don't uh, really prefer that. Yeah, but you and I, we are Indian, you know, we are going to have fresh food every day. <laughs> Not like that, uh, especially some of the things that definitely we should avoid uh, during the night because we don't do much after the dinner, we just uh, go and sleep. So it's hard to digest that uh, oily stuff and even Ayurveda believes that the curd or the yogurt should be avoided during the night because it causes obstruction. So I think um, if she wants to eat it, maybe for the a lunch or during the afternoon time, yeah. she can go for it for a little. Well, the she first of all, we should, you know, first of all, we should ask her, she, we should delete the chips and coffee from her diet. That instead, would be really great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe instead of coffee, Maharishi Ayurveda does a really wonderful coffee substitute, which is full of antioxidants. It's called Raja's Cup. The thing is, when you're asking people to change, substitution really works. Or she can do a couple of teas. She can do vata tea, vata or kapha tea from, you can get it online on Amazon. There's a lot of people selling vata tea with, you know, vata spices. And she has to eat, if nothing else, she has to eat 
if she wants to eat junk she can eat it at lunch time but dinner time has to be a good food so if she is committed mm-hmm. to making one change in her life that is you know at dinner time has to be fresh food and it has to be good food and uh, because nor her her prakriti is bit the dominant maybe using you know coconut oil but internal oleation external oleation is important but yeah mm-hmm. this is very very a typical vata is completely out of balance she needs oil massages internally she needs to eat i would definitely add a lot of ghee to her diet maybe mm-hmm. you know whatever she's eating khichdi or soups or whatever make sure she adds ghee if she is going to have meat or chicken or whatever she has to have it for lunch not for dinner dinner has to be a very nice beautiful moist food you know soupy and moist and fulfilling and you know it grounds her and would you recommend um trifla on a daily basis rather than absolutely i'll tell you one thing about trifla i had um just about 2 weeks ago i had one lady she is actually bit the dominant very similar to this and she has a very high increase in vata and also she is in her menopausal age So I gave her a uh, digest stone which is trifla but it also has a uh, cabbage rose you know shut the pushpi rose which is just rose you know general rose that you actually found so rose is very astringent it's pitta pacifying so I gave her that because she's pitta vata and actually I ended up giving her 5 to 6 a day before it started working mm-hmm. her, the constipation was so bad the gas was so bad and one thing yeah so you know it it took a lot of digest stones so i actually ended up she wasn't having enough uh, fiber in her diet mm-hmm. as well so you know a lot of green leafy vegetables lots of soups to give that fiber and uh, yeah also uh, giving her hinga vashtak so for her energy the reason she is drinking coffee is she lacks energy she probably has chronic fatigue sounds like it but it's hidden by drinking coffee and taking stimulants all day and it's hidden also i think she's you know she, she does have a pitta personality so she's always all over the place and i know when i you know if i have to train her on some things and she jumps in inter, or interrupts me before she can finish and so she's off on on and that that uh, imbalance as far as um being able to think clearly and she also told me that when she has too much information she just can't she has to work on one thing at a time in order for her to process anything Yes, I was in Microsoft about 9 or 10 years ago in India and I would always see in my classroom we had the vata and people all over the place. I went to my manager and said, "If this person is too vata for me to train, he's like, are you out of your mind?" <laughs> I'm like, "We need to give him good because he used to beat everybody and say, "This is too vata for me. I can't handle it." And he's like, "You are absolutely crazy. You can't do that in corporate environment." <laughs> uh yeah, but you know as knowing the personality types and how they work um uh, in an environment you know you can actually as a manager you can actually help the whole group dynamics and and the kind of things you give them to do mm-hmm. uh so for in her case um nowadays a lot of corporate companies they actually offer a, a healthy choice as well so you don't have to have the chips and coffee and, and nonsense but she has to commit if she wants to be well she has to commit to substituting the coffee with you know something maybe yerba mate which does have um, caffeine in it but full of mm-hmm. antioxidants making sure she has ghee in her diet raja's cup is good uh, maybe mm-hmm. tulsi tea vata tea uh, yeah she she really needs to because what's happening is she's already in her uh, vata stage of life mm-hmm. or moving into that then this, these are going to get much worse i think she's also hormonal from what you're describing <laughs> yeah. yeah a little bit yeah. so maybe um so maybe you know things that pacify her hormones because look at how her apana is going really high mm-hmm. so uh maybe things like pomegranate juice or shatavari asparagus definitely want to give her ashwagandha to you know so she doesn't need to rely on coffee mm-hmm. because I'm, asked, i'm sorry to interrupt um i also have a question of i've, I've seen um trifla and in pills What would you think about taking pills as opposed to just having the actual herb and putting water in it and drinking it direct? Um well, we never give the flower with water really. You give it either with ghee or you give it with some what we call anupana. It needs a vehicle for it to carry. This lady already has constipation. I have mm-hmm. a feeling she's probably also malnourished because if you're constipated, she might even be getting headaches and so on if you have constipation. Mm-hmm. and uh yeah so she, the first order of the day with her is put her on one bowel movement a day every single day she has to have a bowel movement 
Mm -hmm. So whatever works, uh, first of all, deleting, making sure the causative factors, which are dry foods and uh, caffeine, and also giving her trifla with ghee. So even if it's a tablet, it doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, ideally, you want to give churna or powder form. But uh, yeah, that, that that is it. Pretty much, put her on ghee, external massage, internal massage, in, internal uh, oleation. Make sure she's having less. You know, substitute the coffee. Uh, at least you should commit to having a good dinner, and uh, uh, the dinner should not be so late. That is very important because she's heading for a lot of problems. She is, you know, she's heading for a lot of problems. She doesn't change. Very, very yeah, good. yes, um, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> All right, wait. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so who do we have next? Uh, who's this? this? He did this. Okay, Christina, you're on. She did just a good job. Hi, here. can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, well, the first person, basic. Oh, the person that I'm taking care. Um, the prakriti was basically they were predominantly pita, meaning that when they were young, they were sharp and they were they weren't really weren't really that dry. Um, but over time, um, it the vata has increased. Um, pita has remained the same, but still still a little bit. Kappa is the same. There's nothing wrong with Kappa. It's still balanced. Um, uh, their uh, symptoms basically has is that um, they're always uh, feeling allergies and they can't really think straight. Um, what else? I'm trying to look at my notes. Sorry. Um, Basically, this person is always feeling tired and has really immune, low immune system. She, um, at a certain time when she was in constant, um, her pita, she had a really high angie, but over time her angie became regular, irregular, sorry, and it's variable, so that is predominantly vata, her increase in vata as well. Um, what else? Are there any thyroid issues? I'm sorry? Thyroid, um, hyperthyroidism and so on? Yeah. Uh, her skin is basically dry all the time, oily, and it suffers from acne, uh, adult acne. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have any uh, low counts of RDC or anemia, so that's good. Um, she's very sensitive to the sun. Um, whenever she's in the sun, she gets rashes. So this is um, in accordance to PETA. Um, digestion is um, not, doesn't really, it digests foods really good, but sometimes in certain foods, it's really heavy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> memory, basically when she was uh, predominantly PETA, it used to be better, but now she's gotten really, really bad at remembering things and thinking clearly. Um, I guess she just dozes out when there's too much going on. Mm-hmm. Um, Vata, um, again, I said she uh, suffers from low energy. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say are the, is the first thing that you need to tackle in this person? I would say it would be um, her low energy because she can't do anything with her low energy. I mean, it has to, her low energy has a lot to do with her immune system and I would say that would be predominantly the first thing. And the fact that her, her pitta is, what are her bowel movements? Um, the, the, it, it's, it, it varies. It so varies. sometimes, depending on the food, it's fine to digest. Like if she eats something heavy like a potato, it takes a while. But if she has yogurt or something, it's easy to digest. Very typical pitta. This is typical, very high pitta, very high tejas. So mm -hmm. sometimes when person has lupus, we mm -hmm. say that the tejas is so high, the pitta is so high that it actually is burning the ojas. Do you know what it means? Yeah. The so ojas is a juice. Ojas is, ojas is a upadhatu or secondary tissue of the shukradhatu. And so rasadhatu, I'm, I'm going into the top block, two topics. So ojas is a refined essence of kapha. Mm -hmm. And Tejas is a refined essence of Pitta. And really, Pran, Tejas, and Ojas work together to give us energy and life. 
So in, in her case, the yogurt is calming her down, which is actually, yogurt is extremely cooling. I'm kapha. If I were to take yogurt, I feel sick and my joints hurt and I feel cold and I, I, I need to wear two jackets. It's so cold for me. I can't even look at yogurt. But she's sensitive to sun. Uh, yeah, so Tejas is pretty high. With, with the whole um, hyperthyroidism also, usually, I don't know because we have to see and examine this person. I'm just giving a very generic. There's so many variables and factors here. So in that. this case, yeah, there's just, you know, this is not enough. We need to ask her because this is a, we need to do like a whole examination, darshanam, mm -hmm. sparshanam, prashanam. So really, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of protocols we'll end up giving this person if that person were to come to me. But yeah. mostly that probably give the pitta pacifying protocols first. Yeah, you well, know? also, I mean, along with being sensitive to the sun, they're very sensitive to the cold, meaning that when they're in cold temperatures, they, their fingers turn purple, and it's called renal syndrome. So mm. it's really to say they're allergic to the cold, but they're also allergic to the sun. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, I would I would definitely put on a you know, fit the pacifying diet, but making sure that vata does not increase. And the mm -hmm. good news between vata and pitta, that, that there's one particular taste that is common to both uh, pitta and vata, which is the sweet taste. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are many herbs that are common to both pitta and vata, but this is definitely, we need to, you know, maybe if you want to work with me on this, you can. This is something that is, you know, it has many layers. So, uh, this little case study that we are doing in block one does not really cover it and can't really help so much because we need to look at the dhatus, we need to look at the srotas, we need to do a full examination. But at least we can, you know, put in a pitta pacifying diet plan and, you know, at least we can help the diet. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right. Okay, who's next? Palak, I can't see, so you'll have to explain this. Palak, are you there? Hello? Hello? Palak, can you explain? It's a little bit hazy. So can you tell yeah. us about this case study? Yeah. So the first uh, case study, her age is 29 years old, and her prakruti is pitta dominant, and second dosha would be vata. Her vikruti is also pitta dominant, and secondary is vata. So both have just increased. And she has dry skin with acne and pigmentation. She has some emotional problems sometimes. And her digestion has high agni. So sometimes she feels that after she has taken her lunch, in a, within an hour or so, she will feel a burning sensation in her stomach. And she also has loose tools often. And she has drying in joints, but this is, I think, only when she goes for gym for more than half an hour or so. She also feels dryness in mouth sometimes. And this is only in the middle of night or early morning. And she feels pain or heaviness below the stomach on the left side, but that is only for some moment after some time that will go away automatically. So for that, she went to see a doctor and the doctor was not able to find any serious symptom. So the doctor simply gave her a printout from Google search. <laughs> and what it really said was there was some stretch in intestines. Okay. Otherwise she was fine. So based on this, I think she has the problems basically. High One question I have for you: you, what are her bowel movements like? They are frequent and loose stools. So you've got actually got this wrong. This is not irregular agni. This is high agni. Yeah, I said high agni. But you've put irregular agni in the form. Monica ji, I think uh, she's talking about case study one, and this is the case yeah, study two. We oh, are looking at. Oh, okay. We are looking at case wrong form. Sorry about that. Okay. So, all right. So this is not the one. Um, okay. Can you? But anyway, the minute you said that there's burning sensation in the stomach, what is the quality of pitta? Pitta is burning and tikshna and sharp. Mm -hmm. So the minute, you know, one thing when you're asking people questions, the way they describe it. For example, 
99% uh, of the people who come to me, I'm always asking them, what, when you eat food, how does it feel? How does it feel that it's going in? So the way mm -hmm. they describe it, I had one person describe, when she was a vata, uh, mm -hmm. prakruti, and she said, when, when the food gets inside me, I feel it's like a knife mm -hmm. inside my stomach, knife in her stomach. So imagine mm -hmm. how, sh what is knife? Knife is sharp. Sure, sure. Yeah, so you know that there's some pitta imbalance there immediately. So it's like a knife. And usually people with vata imbalance will say gas bloated because vata is air and space. I feel glass, gas, I feel bloated, I have flatulence. And I get a lot of people, they have a problem with passing gas because in this culture, you know, if you, if you have flatulence or you pass gas, which I feel for a vata person is a good thing because they're releasing all that gas which is stuck inside them. Mm -hmm. Right. And here they're like, oh, you know, I, I basically pass gas. I'm like, that's a good thing because it's getting, you're getting rid of it. Yeah. You know, isn't it? But yeah, that's a big, big problem here. Um, so we're talking about the other case study that we haven't uploaded. So you want to talk about this one? Okay. So, yeah. So we can take case study too. So this person is a male. He's in 30s. He has graying of hair since childhood. So when he was small and young, he was very slim, but now he has gained weight. He has corrective lenses, and he has irregular agni, mm -hmm. and he eats so fast. Sometimes the other person feels like he has eaten the complete meal, and nothing is left for the other person. Mm -hmm. He has low prana and low tejas. Okay. And since like a month or so, he has puffy eyes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he feels blockage in his nose, so maybe he has sinus issues. Mm -hmm. And he has a habit of drinking two or three cups of coffee every day. Otherwise, he feels that he doesn't get a kick to start his day. So his bowel movements are less than one or less than one a day? He has regular bowel movements, but he takes so much time in the wash in the bathroom. He will take one hour. He will sit there. Okay, no, but that does not answer a question. If it's a regular bowel movement, he's not constipated, so a pan is lower, a pan is high, that kind of doesn't answer a question. So maybe you can find out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, usually, uh, just to give you an idea, normal uh, uh, pitta person, here, mm -hmm. here you go. Here you go. Sorry, trying to draw a pitta person. Uh, usually, pitta people have a very large forehead. And mm -hmm. because, you know, their sadhaka pitta is very high. So if you look at Atul, he has a really high, high forehead. And uh, pitta, because their sadhaka pitta is so high, they will have a little bit graying of hair or balding of hair. Their hair start going, going bald a little bit earlier, even mm -hmm. in young age. Usually uh, pitta will have corrective lenses because their eyes, you know, alochak pitta, their eyes are a little sensitive. Mm -hmm. And pitta will usually gain weight around the middle. Now, pitta resides in the liver, it resides in the spleen, it resides in the lower half of the stomach. And because that is the weak area for pitta, so when pitta gain weight, normally they're not going to gain weight all over the body, just around the stomach. Mm -hmm. Just like kapha will gain weight everywhere. Pitta will gain weight around the stomach and vata normally don't gain weight. They mostly kind of gain air, a pure vata person. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that is a problem common. with formation of uh, words. Like, you, if you ask him what you are doing, then he will say, "So, yes, uh, I am doing this." So he takes a long to reply. That is sadhak pitta issues. So maybe he is so overworked and there is so much stress that his sadhak pitta. So ability to form. So that is udanavata and sadhak pitta issues. So ability to govern emotions, memory, intelligence, digesting thoughts, even a question has to be digested. When yeah. I ask you a question, you have to understand, process it before yeah. you answer me back. So the processing of the question is sadhaka, and then actually, you know, answering back is the udana. So sadhak udana. So this is a more an emotional mental issue than, um, okay. than a physical one. Okay. Yeah, for sadhaka pitta, I would recommend this guy should start doing some meditation actually. Sahana ji, you have anything to add? Yeah, as far as the puffiness um, of the eye is concerned, have you uh, inquired about uh, his uh, urine output and the fluid intake? Because mm -hmm. uh, 
because that's a important thing to yeah. be asked, I guess, because you know the urine is the way to pass our body fluids out and to maintain the fluid electrolyte balance. So mm -hmm. whenever there is a puffiness uh, or like water retention, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the things to be asked. And uh, I'm I'm not sure exactly what you mean by low than. Though he passes uh, his bubbles daily, but if he's like really pushing it hard, he's training, then uh, I'd consider yeah. it like a he has low. to push hard for that. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's not like a regular or natural bubble movement. Sometimes people know that they should pass it daily, and uh, though they are now not getting an urge, they uh, sit in the bathroom and they train a lot, and uh, that yeah. can be also considered as a low udan and. And okay. sorry, low upon, and when the upon is low, you should also think about the urine because the uh, upon water is uh, with all the downward movements like urine, feces, mm -hmm. the stool, everything. Okay. So um, you might have to ask uh, something about that and also his uh, cardiac health. So even in case of the cardiac problems, also the periorbital edema is like. Uh, it's possible to get that. So, so yeah, puffiness of eyes are usually in Darshanam indicative of you know adrenals or kidneys, but we don't know. You have to have you have to have Darshanam. So it's very hard to do this kind of without looking at a person. Maybe from next time onward, we'd ask you to you know maybe take a picture, mm -hmm. especially in okay. the case of you know when the symptom is actually showing on the face. Because in block two, you actually do the tongue diagnostics. So all of you have joined the block two. On okay. June 3rd, we have the, the Nadi and the Jiva. So we will do, be doing Darshanam, Sparshanam. Okay. Dr. Kishti is here. She's going to be helping us do it. So thank you, Palak. Who's next? Let's see. I don't know who is this. Is this yours, Juliana? Uh, who is this? This is Carolyn's. Carolyn, is this yours? Hi. Hi. Yeah, that's mine. Okay, so do you want to tell us about it? Um, yeah. So this is actually my daughter, and she um, has gotten some health problems recently that are, I mean, they've kind of been building over the years here. Um, she definitely recently has been getting digestive problems. But the main problems are with the, um, like, tarpaka, with, like, chronic sinusitis, and then recent, and the congested lymph. And then I started noticing after talking about Viana about the relationship issues and, like, you know, being very kind of um, snappy and sort of aggressive, I guess, is one of the things, and then also a lot of low energy and kind of like chronic fatigue sorts of issues. And she also gets like a lot of PMS and gets really kind of angry around that time and gets angry if she doesn't eat because she does have quite a bit of pitta. Like originally I thought she was more vada, but I'm coming to the conclusion that she's much more pitta. And also her agni, I'd never asked her about this, but since we were doing the case study, um, I did, and she has quite a few bowel movements a day. So, it's kind of what's going on with her. Can you hear? Yeah, we can hear you, Carolyn. Go ahead. Hello? I think she's done talking. So, no, no. Okay. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I got confused here. So anyway, it's interesting to see how similar we are in a lot of ways in terms of our, um, you know, Prakruti and how that manifests in her, like that genetic, you know, carry on from mother to daughter. Uh, I have a... Yeah. I have a question. So, you know, what would you say is the top thing you want to address, you know, with your daughter if she was more motivated? Let's let's put it this way. Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, if she were more motivated, I would be um, working with her in terms of getting her daily cycle kind of in alignment with the natural cycles. Mm -hmm. 
because she tends to stay up all night and then sleep all day. Oh, and so okay. I think that throws her out of balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So she's mostly a pitta, and mm -hmm. right now the kapha is a little high as well, Vyanavata, low energy. Uh, yeah, you know, not following the day and night cycle can be pretty bad. Um, yeah, it can. Yeah, it can definitely. That that's the one thing. The thing with our case studies, we don't control them. But when you're actually practicing, you would notice the people who come to you, they're actually very motivated. They don't want to go to a regular doctor. No offense, Aparnaji. <laughs> um, so the kind of people who would start coming to you when you have your practice, and you know, they're already motivated. They want to change. That's why they've come to you. The only time I find people who are not motivated is when the wives drag their husbands. And then, you know, I ask, I ask them questions, you know, can you answer? He's like, I'm fine, I have nothing wrong, yeah, okay, I had a shoulder problem. So it's, it's hard because I think the way men are programmed, they're not supposed to feel any pain. So it's, it's hard, it's, it's almost a game, a game of cat and mouse, you know, getting it with, you know, uh, asking questions to people who are not motivated. But like I said, I'm, I'm at the point, I just don't even take on patients who are not motivated. So. Uh, if I have a lady calling, she I want to bring my brother or I want to bring my, my husband, I'm like, is he motivated? And usually when women will come, they are the ones who are cooking at home or taking care, then I will take them on, but uh, otherwise not. So having a motivated patient is very, very important. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Aparna will tell you. You can give them 5,000 protocols. You can give them pages and pages. Uh, when I first started uh, practicing Ayurveda in San Diego, I would give, you know, like, a daily cycle protocol, I would give uh, ahara, nutrition protocols, I would take two hours doing a consult. And the point is, if they're not ready to change, they just throw it in the bin when they go home. I mean, we give printouts. I don't do that anymore. I try to give, depending on how motivated, I, the first question I ask is, how motivated are you to change? Are you, you know, how many changes are you willing to make? Because if they're not willing to change, then, you know, even the fact they're coming to you is useless. And, uh, yeah, so if your daughter was going to another Ayurveda practitioner, she probably, because she's paying money, she probably would want to change because she's paid. Well, actually, it's interesting what's happening with her is because as her health problems are becoming more intense, mm -hmm. um, she is more motivated. And so she started going to see a nature path. Like I've, I've offered her, you know, I've, she's gone to several nature paths. But now she's finally sort of like found one that she's clicked with, and I think she's going to be able to start moving forward. And oh. she's working; she is working on changing her um, cycle. For a long time, it was like it, has, it makes no difference. That's ridiculous. And now she's at least you know starting to some days, um, you know, try to get to bed earlier and wake up earlier and that kind of thing. So. I think it's going to be a real slow process, but she's becoming a bit more open. So one change. thing, one thing that is very easy in Ayurveda that can be incorporated very quickly is the use of herbs and spices. For example, for pitta you know, and kapha, you know, just I got, using yeah. I got a whole protocol together for her. Mm -hmm. I went and and I set it all up with instructions and. I made her Tulsi tea <laughs> and everything. I made her her own chorna to put on her food. Nothing. It's nothing. I started using the churna myself because it really tastes good. <laughs> but she hasn't touched it. So, yeah. Okay. But I know the Tulsi tea, especially for the um, sinus issues, yeah. would be great. And I went out of my way to get a really good Tulsi tea and she didn't touch it. You could also, I know you do, um, you, know, you could also give her a head massage with the kapha pacifying oil. That's a good idea. I, yeah. I definitely need to do more more massage with her. I gave her um, nausea yeah. oil at one point for the sinusitis, and the pitta was so high that it gave it the whole inside of her nose bled, and she okay. refuses to do nausea now. So I don't know what herbs were in there, or if I could have used other herbs. Well, if her nose is bleeding, then we say that uh, the pitta dosha has actually entered the rakta dhatu. So pitta dosha has high, it has left its sthanam. And also, sometimes when someone is a pitta, 
and they have a sinus issue, then their sinuses are inflamed. So giving them a regular nasty oil doesn't work. Uh, giving That's them an oil happens. which has, yeah, you need to give things like sandalwood and uh, sandalwood rose. Things that are very pitta pacifying. Yeah, you can actually write that down because normal nasi oil they will have eucalyptus or camphor right, that's what or it these. Has. Yeah, and those things can cause allergic reactions in a pitta person, especially in inflammation, because it's too heating and too stimulating. Mm -hmm. But um, like in the cold pressed coconut oil as a base, if you add some sandalwood, uh, just a couple of drops of sandalwood and lotus, and sahanaji, anything else, rose. Yeah, even the jasmine uh, would be great, I guess. It's, it's cooling. Well. Yeah, I'm thinking. I w actually, I made a little perfume with um, rose, jasmine, and vanilla, and it's the nicest scent in the whole world. I know so, jasmine smells really great. Yeah. yeah, I've I've personally been taking rose jasmine tea in the morning to calm that pitta down. Well, Carolyn, if you come to my house, uh, we've got about you know seven or eight hundred roses outside in our garden mm. and yeah and we have so much jasmine that the whole block is smelling of jasmine and it's pretty beautiful <laughs> it's just the spring weather so what i do is i start collecting my roses and jasmine and i'm going to make oils with them later I, i've good. done that with jasmine yeah. and it really really takes to the oil really well yeah. yeah i have jasmine in my front and i've done that before yeah. So you know you have uh, you have a lot of experience with Ayurveda before, but in in such a case when you're especially dealing with a relative. Now I don't know about others, but my son who's six years old, he's very very pitta. Um, when he was two years old, he had eczema, and uh, you know I I did take him to his pediatrician who told me that oh you know just don't bathe him every day and gave him a gave me a cream and I threw it out in the bin, mm -hmm. and I've just been doing abhyanga on him regularly. I think I did abhyanga on him every single day for the next three months using a little bit of sesame and cold pressed coconut, and mm -hmm. it was gone, and he hasn't had eczema in years, but uh, any time I see that you know the skin's getting dry, I just start you know using different oils mm -hmm. and uh so you know you. Yeah, the you know, same you know, thing with uh, Monica G. My daughter also has a dry eczema, and the doctor prescribed a steroid I never used. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I said, is there anything, this is a direct thing you're uh, advising me to use the steroid? And this is the only thing we have. And I said, forget it. And uh, I'm giving her, as you said, the coconut oil uh, massage every day and giving her a bath, and she's perfectly fine. Yeah, I yesterday or was it no three days ago I had a case of a little girl. She's only I think um, nine years old, and uh, her eczema was really really aggravated. I mean it was so aggravated it almost looked like dermatitis, and uh, you know so she very very vata personality. So even before she came to visit me, her parents came to visit, and both of them are vata. So I already knew before the child came that this is a vata issue. And so this was a very aggravated and advanced case. And uh, so we pu we put the child, I did a little bit of biofeedback. I put different oils in her body and said what she felt. When I put, you know, uh, vata pacifying oils, she was like, I don't like it and this. When I put neem oil and manjusta oil, which are the actual herbs, and very, very bitter oils, she said, oh, that feels good. I like mm -hmm. it. She likes the neem oil, and this is a nine, nine, ten years old girl. So we gave her a neem and manjusta oil uh, massage there and then. Within minutes, you know, her skin, portions of her skin was were pacified, and you know, so she was actually inflamed as well. So you used biofeedback with her? Yeah, yeah, I do that all the time because to check. Yeah. How did? What kind of biofeedback? Well, you know, if somebody, I'll ask, for example, I'll ask people to uh, take a little bit of trifla and put it on their tongue. Uh -huh. And based on what taste they're feeling, the rasa that they're feeling, I kind of find out that this is the taste. Usually, you know, people who are, uh, you know, who take care of themselves and who listen to their bodies, those those people can, you know, when they tell me I like this taste or mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tasting more bitter, because trifla mm -hmm. has practically all the tastes mm -hmm. in it except salty. So it is. Mm -hmm. So I use the Trifula test. You know, it's a very Dr. Russell Lad test. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use the Trifula test. I'll give them different churnams. I say, what do you feel? Uh, most of the, like when uh, Dr. Sahana and I did the women's support workshop, we gave pomegranate and uh, Ashoka to one of her students, Susan, who's very Vata. She hated it. She hated it. But when we gave her Shatavari, she loved it. So 
mm-hmm. you know, because she's a balanced person. Her, mm-hmm. she was, she, but we didn't tell her what we were giving her. So she, but she was hated uh, rose jam, the most delicious oh. <laughs> preparation, and that's yeah. a clear example for a typical one. Yes, yeah, so rose jam, you know, it's made of roses. The Pitta people and the Kafa, they just loved it because rose is so astringent. But she couldn't stand it. She was gagging over the rose. But hmm. this is a very, uh, you know, a typical example of uh, biofeedback. So in Ayurveda, we want to use the drugs to find out what's happening. The, the herbs will actually help us find out and diagnose what's happening with a person. But in this case, you know, on a, you know, when, when the child first walked in and I looked at the child, it looked like this was a, you know, typical Vata case, both parents of Vata. But, you know, we did a little bit of examination and I used different oils and we, I was talking to her. We talked about the bowel movement. It, it seems that her agni is displaced. The agni is so high that it's causing the vata to, uh, like, I don't like the sun. I like to wear glasses. So, you, you know, you knew that the agni is displaced in this child. And she was a little bit constipated mostly because, and her tongue had a lot of ama in it as well. So we, I put her in a cup of it, the pacifying diet. And the girl likes bitter melon. Can you believe it? How many mm. people like bitter melon? She she loved it. I also sometimes will cook food from my home and take it, and I, I'll have people taste food. So with kids, it's a little hard because kids usually generally like sweet things. Even if it's good for them, they will gravitate towards it. But this girl, she just loved bitter. So we put her on a lot of bitter, sweet vegetables and diet. Okay, so thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, you know, one thing I comment... I'm learning muscle testing, so I'm looking forward to being able to muscle test with people too, which is a a way of seeing whether, you know, the herb energetically strengthens them or weakens them. Yeah, I have done some, but I'm not sure how that works. But um, I work with this chiropractor who does muscle testing. So he sends a lot of his patients to me. So between his muscle testing and my, you know, we have pretty much, we have a good good track record. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) But I, I can't do it. It's, it's his. All right. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, so thank you. And all right. This is done. Okay. Are we missing anyone? Uh, Aparna, am I missing you or um, missing you? Is a 41-year-old male. Um, and um, his prakriti, uh, childhood prakriti was V3, P3, K1. And his current vikruti is um, pushing more towards pitta. Vata has decreased and kapha is about the same. Um, I hope I did this right. Let's see. Um, look through all the sabdoshas. And um, pachaka pitta uh, is increased. Um, he gets reflux pretty easily, um, or he'll have decreased gastric emptying after certain meals, um, especially if they have um, things like hing, spices like hing in them. Um, he'll sort of have a lot of reflux for several hours, um, and that can sometimes lead to cough at night, too. Um, and then based on that, I also think that his apana may be high, Oh, okay, I think it causes reflux. Okay. Um, and sometimes with cauliflower, too, like if there's a soup with cauliflower in it, that also gives him upset uh, reflux. What about um, onions and garlic, chili pepper, garam masala, and so on? That doesn't, garam masala can bother him. He's pretty averse to spicy foods, even though he, if you ask him, do you like spicy foods, he says, yeah, I can deal, but he really, if you offer him, like, um, hey, you know, here's some pickle, will you have it? He'll always say no. What about sour food? Tendency. Citrus and sour. Sour food doesn't, not a fan. Okay, so this is very typical pit, though. But the good news is he knows that these tastes do not, you know, suit him. So, uh, katu, so katu is actually... So all onions, garlic, spicy food, citrus, all of these are actually going to aggravate his stomach. And he already is, he's avoiding it naturally because his body is giving him the feedback, this is not good for me. So does he, yeah, but does he take tomatoes? Because tomatoes are also sour. Tomatoes don't bother him, I've noticed. 
they don't. So the thing with tomatoes is the tomatoes do bother, but it just happens slowly. So if, if tomatoes can be given, then make sure the tomatoes are sweet, okay. not so sour. So okay. sweet tomatoes are good. Okay. For, I, I don't know because I, you know, I, we live here in California and Jacqueline was complaining. You talk about all these exotic fruits and it's snowing here in Cleveland. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, if it's sweet tomatoes and, uh, you know, they're fresh and they're straight off a farm and they're you know, ripe and sweet. But the tomatoes that are, you know, they, that you get all year round, maybe in the winter time, that have been treated with ethylene gas to ripen them yes. artificially, maybe you want to avoid those ones. So maybe getting it from an organic food store is a better idea if these are more because in the organic food store in winter, all the tomatoes that you get are actually going to be sour. And the tomatoes okay. that you get in, the, get in the summertime are actually going to be sweeter because this is because they're getting it actually. They're, they're growing things. And so summer will actually ripen and sweeten tomatoes. And, to, uh, you know, like Roma tomatoes are sweeter. What is that? Um, there's a couple of tomatoes that are sweeter than the others. So, you know, it's uh -huh. a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Are you okay? Because you sound as if your throat is a little... Oh, I just have sniffles right now for some reason. It's <laughs> I mean, okay. I, it's because I yeah it's because I've fallen off my daily routine, so that happens. Uh, I get instant nose run. I don't okay. keep up with my friend. I am, but I'm okay. Thank All right. You. Um, and then um, you know, as far as brown ojas and phages, I don't know if I have a complete understanding of how they work, and so this is the kaffa in me. I don't really feel confident doing something unless I've completely I'm a slow learner that way so I think um, until I really feel comfortable I don't know if I can really assess accurately what it is but if I had to guess um, I think his OGIS may be low from time to time because he um, frequently gets um, viral you know colds and coughs um, and coughing to the point where he's um, you know, he, he will sometimes gag. Um, you know, he's a pediatrician for a living, so he brings all sorts of viruses back home with him. So um, I think, you know, and he's been doing it for a long time. He's been a pediatrician for 10, 15 years. So you would think that he'd be more immune by now, but I, if his OGIS is low, maybe that's why he still gets sick quite often. That's my guess. Okay. Do you want me to quickly give a little bit picture? It's hard because you can't really explain Prantagis Ojas in a few minutes. But, um, you know, if you think of prana as the essence of vata energy, instead of thinking prana, thinking this is vata, but this is the most important vata, think of Ojas as kapha, but the most important uh, kapha. And think of Tejas as Pitta, but the most important, not just the important, because these these are the energies that are interplaying not just physically, but energetically in our body as well. So uh, if you were to take raw milk like we do in India, and then you boil it, take the cream out, and you churn it, and then you make butter with it, and then you from butter you make ghee. So the ghee is, the ghee is much more powerful than raw milk. Right. It's very refined, and it's very refined uh, how ghee can go deep into the dhatus and do so much. But milk will not go, and the quality of milk is actually different than ghee. Even though ghee is coming from the milk, if you were to describe milk, you would say milk is very cooling. You know, uh, mil you know sometimes you don't want to give milk to a vata person, uh, you know, because it's really cooling, especially milk in a in a yogurt form. You don't want to give to a vata person because yogurt uh -huh. is very very cooling. But ghee is also coming from yogurt, and ghee is also coming from milk. But still, it's amazing for so you're changing the energetic quality of the milk by giving uh, by giving it in that refined form. So think mm -hmm. of you know here in your prana. Ojas and Tejas. In fact, sometimes we call the five Vatas the five Pranas as well. Mm -hmm. And so think of a Prana as the refined essence, the ghee that is coming from Vata. Okay. So not only is the quality of this Prana is so refined, the quality of this Prana is the quality of our Atma. It is, it's almost divine. It's life. Sure. And 
So, but prana needs to, you know, power something. It needs to power something. What does it power? So it, it's an, so here is an interplay of these three energies. Ojas, so kapha, you know, if your kapha is high and, you know, if you have good kapha in your body, you know, then your rasa dhatu is high. Rasa dhatu is high. And the refined essence of rasa dhatu is ojas. Okay. So think of the refined, the ghee that is coming from the raw milk, is ojas but ojas is like the juice of immunity it's i mean that's it's a it's it's described as a yellow sap so in ayurveda and ojas is a secondary tissue produced from shukra dhatu meaning your reproductive so sure. all the reproductive so in ayurveda when you, you know when somebody is just recovering from and they are undergoing panchakarma or they are um, undergoing certain austerities and tapas you know for treatment then we say please refrain from sex Right, because, right. Because if they are, uh, if their shukra dhatu is being released, if the reproductive fluids are being released, then the ojas is getting released. So people who, yeah. So one of the protocols for increasing immunity is celibacy, believe it or not, just for sure, the time, sure. just for the time. So ojas, so shukra dhatu is a refined essence of rasa dhatu, which is kapha, and the secondary dhatu here is ojas. Okay. So that is a pretty good question. Carolyn has a question. What does birth control do to OGIS, especially IUDs? Oh, you should hear Olga answer this question. She just did an entire class on birth control. And yep, well, I feel very strongly about birth control. I feel, I mean, telling that to a person who gets periods two weeks and it's really painful, it's hard. But yeah, it does. It does not help OGIS, let's put it this way. Yes. Yeah. But maybe, Dr. Sahana, you can tell after. Um, so now Tejas is the refined essence of Pitta. Okay. So you know, when you see a person, they have their skin is really glowing. Or you see spiritual people sometimes, they have a glowing skin. They have this inner radiance. Tejasvi. So that is, yeah, Tejasvi. That's Tejas. But mm -hmm. Tejas is powering the Brahman and Ojas. Tejas is, again, the energy of transformation. Without Tejas, you cannot power the everything that is happening. So if, if, if Ojas was the actual physical component, Prana was the one that carries this component to give us immunity, Tejas is the, the, the battery or the cell that powers it. Okay. So it's, you know, it's, it's very hard in one, in one minute, but they kind of work together, Prana, Ojas, mm -hmm. and Tejas. So when we are talking about, especially, you know, uh, maybe Dr. Kirti, she is a Rogue Nidan specialist. She can talk about it. And when we're talking about the actual pathology of disease, we will actually, instead of saying Vata is causing it or Pitta is causing it, we'll actually use the word, you know, what is the state of Ojas and Tejas or PTO? That is more important in Samparapti or etiology and, and pathogenesis rather than Kapha, Pitta, Vata. So Dr. Kirti, do you, do you have anything to say about, is she there? Yeah. Yeah, you have to uh, assess in detail for the prana, ojas, and tejas, but it will take practice for you. And another thing, the tejas, it, as Monica Ji said, it's a very subtle energy, and it's the star of pitta, pitta doshas, and you have to, like a tejas week. So it's really difficult uh, to see, especially differentiate between it is really tejas week or it's just the increase of the pitta. Because sometimes with the increase of the pitta, you get that uh, very oily and like uh, shiny look on the skin. Sure. So you have to differentiate between the like uh, uh, tejas and the uh, increase of the pitta, mm -hmm. like increase in the brajak pitta. Okay. One thing that I, um, you know, one of my gurus told me, and and this this may not be totally authentic, but this is something that I heard, is that. You know, vat, pit, kaf are working on more like the physical channels of the body, and it's it's very easy to see. Where pran, ojas, and tejas are working at the subtle channels. So you have the energetic body, and we have the physical body. So our energetic body, which is the consciousness, which is you know our sukshma sharir, that is being powered by the, these refined energies. So I don't know if that sense. makes that makes sense. That actually helps. That really helps me. Yeah. Because uh, disease is first manifested in our consciousness and mind before it, it is, then the symptoms get manifested in the physical body. So in Ayurveda, we have three symptoms, actually. 
uh, which you don't get in, I think, Western medicine. You know, if you, you have to do the blood work, you have to see the symptoms. If you can't see them, then it's not happening. But um, in Ayurveda, you actually see the symptoms as well. Okay. So you know what? We are running out of time. And uh, we'll discuss. This is really good. Let's put all these studies up in the forums and, and, and start a discussion. And we have Ayurveda and the Minds uh, class starting for block two. So, um, and also, we'll discuss next week, we'll discuss more case studies. And next week is actually your last class, believe it or not. It's been an amazing journey. And uh, let's keep on discussing your case studies. And if you have anything that comes up, uh, any questions you have about protocols, just please put them on the forums. Uh, Dr. Kirti is here, and uh, Sahana is there. I'm there to answer them. So um, thank you very much. Thank you.